Well, hello again from Kingston. It's been an exceptionally good week weather-wise and in terms of progress with the project. So if you want to find out everything that happened, well almost, and keep up to date, please consider subscribing. I'll talk to you at the end after the wildlife. Thanks for watching. See you then. A calm, dry week began with sharp lawn and landscaping planting new trees in the area of the holding pond. Meanwhile, up on Gore Road at the intersection with points at Mark Drive, road marking was in full swing. As the team from Bar Construction began preparations for the week, they welcomed a massive Volvo rock truck to the site. Evidence continued to mount of efforts to clear the site of equipment no longer needed. As a little rain arrived in the afternoon and the trucks removing gravel continued to roll by, work continued to remove the steel supports for the catwalk on Pier 7. At the ever-shrinking end of the causeway, two excavators continued to work tirelessly. Tuesday made a rather foggy start, but the work continued to be very much the same as the day before. A lot of work is being done to clear the north side of fittings allowing the gravel below to be removed. Barr have brought in another larger excavator to assist. It was quickly brought into service and it's been sending the Volvo rock truck off to build the service road with loads of more than 40 tonnes at a time. Right alongside the excavation work a crew was using bucket lifts to prepare to remove the catwalks from Pier 20, whilst another team worked to remove the bracket from the base of the east abutment. Out on the river, Inner Harbour Marine Services, using a shallower draft barge, were pulling the stakes that had once held the turbidity curtain. Back on the east side, surrounded by evidence of their earlier work, sharp landscaping continued to plant trees around the holding pond. The considerable efforts being made to remove the last brackets from the south side of the bridge, using the bridge buggies extensively, should not be overlooked. And of course, there was no let up in the removal of gravel from the west side. Wednesday was another day that saw departures of equipment from site, including these lighting sets and generator. Kimco brought in a tractor to remove steel sections that had been taken down from a pier. And the bar continued relentlessly to remove gravel from what had been the temporary causeway. Kimco were looking to remove steel on the west end too, and the effort to remove gravel was no less intense there. The effort to remove the brackets from the south side of the bridge and the temporary safety structures continues unabated, and care must be taken handling these heavy objects. Once the brackets have gone, there's work to be done identifying and repairing any damage that may have occurred to the concrete surfaces. It was a foggy start to the day on Thursday. 
but work went ahead after a brief safety pause. More trees means more topsoil, and it all has to be carefully distributed in just the right way. The new stand of trees on the northwest end of the holding pond is looking pretty good. Removal of the gravel on the east end is proceeding layer by layer, with the big Volvo rock truck playing a key role. In the bright afternoon sunshine, work to remove old sections of the turbidity curtain began. The work will end with its complete removal from side top. A collector box beside the bridge buggy allows the crew, as they remove objects, to place them there rather than having to hand them up one at a time. Thursday afternoon provided a rare opportunity to see the Genic Underbridge Access Machine demonstrate its capabilities. Back with the bridge buggy crew, it was time to deploy power tools to resolve issues with stubborn objects. On the east side, below the library, Sharp's green-thumbed group seemed determined to fill the world with trees. Some of you must be wondering by this time, what's happening on the west end? Well, I can tell you that all week, Black & McDonald's Electric All-Stars have been busy installing bicycle lights and other traffic signals. An early start on Friday morning produced a bit of a light show. Early or not, excavators were already at work and trucks were awaiting loading. Bridge buggies were on the move to new locations where they are slowly and carefully lowered into the working position. The Genic too was relocated and almost immediately provided a platform for work. Efforts to remove gravel by the big bar excavator were relentless. sending the massive Volvo rock truck up the service road 30 or more times a day. Over on the west side, as the week drew to a close, pressure washing of the piers was taking place. It would be absolutely no surprise to hear that gravel removal on the west side was still in full swing, keeping a small fleet of trucks steadily engaged. As the work continues, just three of the five turtle crossings remain. Now, one more thing before we go to wildlife. Towards the end of the day on Friday, it was noticed that treatment of the exposed concrete with a silane sealer had begun. The work will continue for several days. Silane penetrates and bonds with the concrete surface to produce a waterproofing finish. The swans here didn't seem to appreciate the passage of the marine mounties.
Well, that was quite a week. And there are good things ahead, including the opening of the bridge, the date for which I'm sure we're going to hear before very long. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like the channel, and there will be more to come when the third crossing is done. In the meantime, thanks again. See you next week. Bye for now.